Ecological imperialism is a concept that refers to the extension of power and control over ecosystems and environments by one group or nation at the expense of other groups or nations. It involves the domination and exploitation of natural resources, often by more technologically advanced societies, leading to the alteration or destruction of ecosystems and the displacement or eradication of indigenous or local populations. The term, ecological imperialism, was coined by historian Alfred W. Crosby in his book titled, Ecological Imperialism, The Biological Expansion of Europe, 900-1900, published in 1986. Crosby examined the historical patterns of European expansion and colonization and argued that European powers, particularly during the age of exploration and subsequent centuries, exerted ecological dominance over other regions of the world through the introduction of new species, changes in land use, and the exploitation of resources. Ecological imperialism can take various forms. It can involve the introduction of non-native species into an ecosystem, which can have negative impacts on native flora and fauna. This disruption can lead to the extinction or decline of indigenous species and alter the overall ecological balance. It can also involve the extraction of natural resources, such as timber, minerals, or fossil fuels, without proper consideration for the long-term sustainability of those resources or the well-being of local communities. One example of ecological imperialism is the colonization of the Americas by European powers. The arrival of Europeans led to the introduction of new diseases to which Native American populations had no immunity, resulting in devastating epidemics and significant population declines. European colonizers also brought new species, such as livestock and crops, which profoundly transformed the landscape and disrupted local ecosystems. The clearing of forests, introduction of European farming practices, and exploitation of resources had lasting ecological impacts. It is important to note that ecological imperialism is not limited to historical contexts. It can also occur in contemporary times, with powerful nations or corporations exerting control over ecosystems and resources in less developed regions for economic gain. This often leads to environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, and social injustices. Addressing ecological imperialism requires acknowledging the importance of ecological sustainability, respecting the rights and knowledge of indigenous and local communities, and promoting responsible resource management practices. International cooperation, conservation efforts, and policies that prioritize environmental protection and social equity are crucial for mitigating the negative impacts of ecological imperialism and ensuring a more balanced and sustainable approach to our interactions with ecosystems. The XYZ Corporation, a multinational conglomerate based in a developed country, has recently initiated a large-scale mining project in a remote region of a developing country. The area in question is rich in mineral resources and is home to several indigenous communities whose livelihoods and cultural practices are closely tied to the land. However, the XYZ Corporation's mining activities have raised concerns about potential ecological imperialism. The company's operations involve the extensive extraction of minerals, which requires the clearing of vast tracts of pristine forests. This deforestation not only destroys the habitat of numerous plant and animal species but also disrupts the delicate balance of the local ecosystem. Furthermore, the corporation has brought in heavy machinery and introduced new technology that significantly alters the landscape and contributes to increased pollution levels. The emission of harmful chemicals and mining byproducts into the air and water sources poses a threat to the health of both the indigenous communities and the environment. The local indigenous communities have voiced their opposition to the mining project, expressing concerns about the potential loss of their ancestral lands and the degradation of their cultural heritage. They argue that their sustainable practices, which have sustained them for generations, are being undermined by the invasive practices of the XYZ Corporation. In this scenario, the concept of ecological imperialism becomes evident. The XYZ Corporation, driven by profit and technological superiority, is exerting dominance over the local ecosystem and the indigenous communities who depend on it. The corporation's actions prioritize its own interests and economic gain over the long-term well-being of the environment and the people directly affected by the project. To address this issue, it is crucial to recognize and respect the rights and knowledge of the indigenous communities. Their traditional ecological knowledge can provide valuable insights into sustainable resource management practices and contribute to the preservation of the local ecosystem. 
Engaging in meaningful consultation and negotiation processes with the affected communities is necessary to ensure that their voices are heard and their concerns are adequately addressed. Additionally, strict environmental regulations and monitoring mechanisms should be put in place to prevent ecological degradation and hold the XYZ Corporation accountable for its actions. Encouraging sustainable mining practices, such as reforestation initiatives, responsible waste management, and the use of eco-friendly technologies, can help mitigate the negative impacts on the ecosystem and the local communities. By actively addressing the concept of ecological imperialism in this mining project, stakeholders can work towards a more equitable and sustainable approach that respects the rights of indigenous communities, protects the environment, and ensures a fair distribution of benefits and costs associated with resource extraction. A fictional novel concept that incorporates the theme of ecological imperialism. Title. Shadows of Eden. Synopsis. Shadows of Eden, is a thought-provoking novel set in a near-future world where ecological imperialism has become a dominant force. The story follows the journey of Dr. Maya Patel, a brilliant ecologist and activist, as she uncovers the hidden truths behind a global corporation's ambitious project. In this world, the Genesis Corporation, a powerful conglomerate, has developed advanced biotechnology that enables them to engineer and control ecosystems. They have perfected a method to rapidly terraform barren lands into lush, productive landscapes, claiming to bring life and prosperity to desolate regions. Dr. Patel, initially enticed by the promise of ecological restoration, joins the Genesis Corporation. As a consultant, however, as she delves deeper into the company's operations, she begins to uncover a darker truth. The corporation's methods involve introducing genetically modified organisms, some of which are invasive and threaten native species. The rapid transformation of ecosystems leads to the displacement and extinction of indigenous flora and fauna, disrupting delicate ecological balances. Driven by her convictions, drive. Patel joins forces with a group of environmental activists and indigenous leaders who have long resisted the encroachment of the Genesis Corporation. Together, they embark on a quest to expose the ecological imperialism and bring justice to the affected communities. As they unravel the corporation's secrets, drive, Patel and her allies face numerous challenges, including corporate espionage, political manipulation, and the relentless pursuit of profit. They must navigate treacherous landscapes, confront moral dilemmas, and rally support from people around the world who are awakening to the consequences of ecological imperialism. Shadows of Eden is a tale of resilience, sacrifice, and the power of unity in the face of unchecked corporate power. Through the experiences of Dr. Patel and her companions, the novel explores the complex ethical, environmental, and social issues surrounding ecological imperialism, encouraging readers to question the balance between technological progress, ecological preservation, and respect for indigenous knowledge. By weaving together elements of science fiction, adventure, and social commentary, Shadows of Eden serves as a cautionary tale that highlights the urgent need for responsible stewardship of the environment and the protection of indigenous rights in a world grappling with the consequences of ecological imperialism. Concept of Ecological Imperialism to Joseph Conrad's novel, Heart of Darkness While, Heart of Darkness, primarily explores themes of imperialism and the darkness of human nature, one can also analyze the story through an ecological lens. In the novel, the protagonist, Marlo, embarks on a journey up the Congo River in search of the enigmatic Mr. Kurtz, who has established a trading post deep in the African jungle. As Marlo ventures into the heart of the continent, he encounters scenes of environmental exploitation and degradation caused by European colonial powers. Ecological imperialism can be observed in the ruthless exploitation of the African environment by European colonizers. The extraction of ivory serves as a metaphor for the plundering of natural resources by imperial forces. The native landscape, once teeming with life and vitality, becomes scarred and depleted under the weight of the colonial enterprise. Furthermore, the novel highlights the disregard for indigenous cultures and their deep connection to the natural world. The colonizers impose their own values and practices, disrupting the delicate ecological balance that the native communities have long upheld. This disruption results in the loss of traditional knowledge and the disruption of sustainable practices that were deeply integrated into the local ecosystem. 
the juxtaposition of the African landscape and the darkness of human exploitation in Heart of Darkness invites readers to contemplate the broader consequences of ecological imperialism. It raises questions about the environmental impact of imperial ventures and the erasure of indigenous cultures and their intimate understanding of the natural world. By exploring the ecological dimensions of Heart of Darkness, readers can gain a deeper understanding of the novel's critique of colonialism and reflect on the interconnectedness of environmental exploitation and cultural imperialism. Here are some specific examples from Heart of Darkness that can be analyzed through the lens of ecological imperialism. Exploitation of Natural Resources The ivory trade depicted in the novel represents the relentless pursuit of natural resources by European colonizers. The ivory extraction is driven by economic interests, leading to the destruction of elephant populations and the disruption of the ecological balance in the region. Destruction of the African Landscape Throughout the story, Marla witnesses scenes of environmental degradation caused by European presence. The landscape is described as being scarred by deforestation, pollution, and the reckless extraction of resources, reflecting the destructive impact of ecological imperialism. Disruption of Indigenous Ecological Knowledge The novel highlights the disregard for indigenous cultures and their deep understanding of the natural world. The imposition of European values and practices disrupts the traditional ecological knowledge and sustainable practices of the local communities, leading to ecological imbalance and loss of biodiversity. Symbolism of Darkness The metaphor of darkness in the novel can be interpreted as the environmental darkness brought upon the African landscape by European exploitation. The darkness represents the loss of vitality, the degradation of the natural environment, and the erasure of indigenous cultures. Contrast of European and African environments Conrad presents a stark contrast between the supposedly civilized European societies and the supposedly savage African landscape. This juxtaposition reflects the biased perception of European colonizers towards the African environment, devaluing its ecological richness and perceiving it as a mere resource to be exploited. These examples illustrate how Heart of Darkness can be analyzed through the lens of ecological imperialism, shedding light on the environmental consequences of European colonialism and the interconnectedness between ecological exploitation and cultural imperialism. Manipulation of the Natural Environment The colonial presence in the African Congo involves not only resource extraction but also the manipulation of the natural environment to serve the interests of the colonizers. This can be seen in the construction of roads, infrastructure, and the reshaping of the landscape to facilitate European dominance and control. Loss of indigenous connection to the land. The native African communities in the novel are portrayed as being intimately connected to their land and environment. However, the intrusion of European powers disrupts this relationship and erodes the indigenous understanding of and respect for the natural world. This loss of connection contributes to the degradation of the environment and the loss of sustainable practices. Ecological violence and degradation. The actions of the European colonizers result in ecological violence and degradation. The novel depicts scenes of wanton destruction, such as the indiscriminate killing of animals, the burning of forests, and the pollution of rivers. These acts reflect the disregard for the natural environment and the consequential ecological consequences. Themes of hubris and exploitation. The character of Kurtz embodies the epitome of ecological imperialism. He becomes consumed by his pursuit of power and wealth, leading him to commit extreme acts of exploitation and violence against both the environment and the indigenous populations. Kurtz's descent into madness mirrors the destructive consequences of unchecked ecological imperialism. The river is a symbol of environmental change. The journey along the Congo River in the novel serves as a metaphor for the transformation of the environment under colonial rule. As Marlowe progresses deeper into the heart of the continent, he witnesses the gradual deterioration of the natural world, paralleling the encroachment of European influence. These additional examples highlight the various aspects of ecological imperialism present in Heart of Darkness. They emphasize the environmental devastation caused by European colonialism and the accompanying themes of exploitation, degradation, and the loss of indigenous knowledge and connection to the land. Indigenous Lives is Expendable The novel portrays the indigenous African people as victims of ecological imperialism. They are often treated as expendable labor or obstacles in the pursuit of resources. Their lives and well-being are disregarded, highlighting the dehumanizing effects of the colonial enterprise on both human and environmental levels. 
Dehumanization of nature. The European colonizers in the novel often view the African landscape as an untamed and savage wilderness that needs to be conquered and controlled. This perception dehumanizes nature, reducing it to a mere backdrop for their imperial ambitions. The devaluation of the natural environment contributes to its exploitation and destruction. Interconnectedness of human and natural exploitation, Heart of Darkness, suggests that the exploitation of the natural environment and the exploitation of human lives are intimately connected. The ruthless pursuit of resources leads to the exploitation and enslavement of indigenous populations, further exacerbating the ecological degradation caused by the imperial presence. Imperialistic desires is a reflection of ecological greed. The insatiable desires of the European colonizers in the novel, particularly embodied by Kurtz, mirror the greed and voraciousness with which they consume and exploit the environment. Their insatiable hunger for wealth and power parallels the destructive impulses of ecological imperialism. Absence of Sustainable Practices The novel highlights the absence of sustainable practices and stewardship of the environment in the colonial endeavor. The colonizers prioritize short-term gains and profits over long-term ecological preservation, resulting in irreversible damage to the African landscape and its ecosystems. Themes of Alienation and Loss Heart of Darkness explores the psychological and emotional toll of ecological imperialism on both the colonizers and the colonized. The degradation of the environment and the loss of connection to nature contribute to a sense of alienation and spiritual emptiness, ultimately leading to the unraveling of individuals' moral compasses. These additional examples emphasize the ecological and human consequences of imperialism in Heart of Darkness. They shed light on the interconnectedness of ecological exploitation, dehumanization, and the spiritual and psychological toll on both the oppressor and the oppressed. Symbolism of the Congo River The Congo River in the novel serves as a metaphor for the destructive force of ecological imperialism. It represents a conduit through which the exploitative and oppressive practices of the colonizers flow into the heart of Africa, leaving behind a trail of environmental devastation and human suffering. Contrast of Light and Darkness The stark contrast between light and darkness throughout the novel can be interpreted as a representation of the ecological impact of imperialism. Light symbolizes harmony, balance, and the preservation of nature, while darkness represents the Destruction, exploitation, and loss of ecological integrity brought about by the colonizers. Ecological displacement. The arrival of the European colonizers disrupts the natural order and ecological balance of the African environment. The introduction of foreign flora and fauna, as well as the alteration of land and water systems, displaces native species and disrupts the delicate ecological equilibrium that had existed prior to European intervention. Narrator's Reflections on Nature. Marlowe, the novel's narrator, reflects on the beauty and grandeur of the natural environment, particularly in the early stages of his journey. However, as he delves deeper into the heart of darkness, he becomes increasingly aware of the destructive influence of ecological imperialism, which taints his perception of the natural world. The Silence of Nature Throughout the novel, there is a recurring motif of silence in the natural world. This silence can be seen as a metaphor for the suppression of the environment and the loss of its voice in the face of colonization. The vibrant sounds of nature are muted, reflecting the silenced cries of the exploited land and its inhabitants. Parallels between human and environmental exploitation, Heart of Darkness, draws parallels between the exploitation of the African landscape and the oppression of the indigenous people. The destruction of nature and the subjugation of native communities are intertwined, illustrating how ecological imperialism perpetuates social injustice and environmental degradation. These additional examples further highlight the ecological themes and implications of imperialism in Heart of Darkness. They underscore the interconnectedness between the human and natural realms, the metaphorical symbolism throughout the narrative, and the impact of colonization on both the environment and its inhabitants. Degradation of the natural order. The presence of European colonizers disrupts the natural order and ecological harmony of the African environment. The exploitation and extraction of resources upset the balance of ecosystems, leading to the degradation of flora, fauna, and the overall ecological integrity of the region. Loss of cultural and spiritual connections. The imposition of European values and practices. Erodes the indigenous communities' cultural and spiritual connections to the land. Traditional rituals, beliefs, and sustainable practices that were deeply intertwined with the natural world are suppressed, 
further disconnecting the people from their ecological roots. Contrast of European and African attitudes towards nature. The novel contrasts the European colonizers' exploitative and utilitarian view of nature with the African community's reverence and harmonious coexistence with the environment. This contrast highlights the destructive consequences of imposing Western perspectives on land and resources. Ecological ignorance and arrogance. The colonizers' ignorance and arrogance regarding the African environment contribute to the ecological devastation. Their lack of understanding and respect for the intricate ecological systems result in unintended consequences and irreversible damage. Psychological effects of ecological exploitation. The exploration of ecological imperialism in Heart of Darkness goes beyond the physical impact on the environment. It delves into the psychological toll on both the oppressors and the oppressed, as the relentless pursuit of wealth and power engenders a sense of spiritual decay and moral corruption. Foreshadowing of ecological catastrophe. The imagery and symbolism throughout the novel foreshadow impending ecological catastrophe. The decaying landscapes, dying vegetation, and polluted rivers serve as warnings of the irreversible damage caused by unchecked ecological imperialism. Wide Sargasso Sea serves as a prequel to Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre and provides a backstory for Bertha Mason, the madwoman confined in the attic of Thornfield Hall. The novel is set in Jamaica during the early 19th century when the island was under British colonial rule. Ecological imperialism can be observed in the novel through the exploitation and degradation of the natural environment by the British colonizers. Here are a few ways in which the concept can be applied. Plantation economy. The novel portrays the plantation economy as central to the colonial. Enterprise in Jamaica. The British colonizers establish vast sugarcane plantations that require extensive land clearing, monoculture farming practices, and the use of slave labor. This form of agriculture leads to deforestation, soil erosion, and ecological imbalance. Land enclosure. The British colonizers practice land enclosure, taking over vast tracts of land that were once accessible to the local Jamaican population. This enclosure disrupts traditional patterns of land use, displaces local communities, and restricts their access to natural resources, exacerbating the ecological and social impacts of colonization. Destruction of indigenous flora and fauna. The introduction of non-native plant species and the clearing of land for agriculture result in the destruction of indigenous flora and fauna. The novel hints at the disappearance of native species and the loss of biodiversity, reflecting the ecological consequences of British colonization. Disruption of ecological knowledge. The British colonizers disregard the traditional ecological knowledge of the Jamaican people, including their understanding of local ecosystems, sustainable agricultural practices, and medicinal properties of native plants. This disruption leads to a loss of ecological wisdom and contributes to the degradation of the natural environment. Symbolism of the Sargasso Sea. The title of the novel, Wide Sargasso Sea, references the vast floating seaweed in the Atlantic Ocean. The Sargasso Sea, which lies between the Americas and Europe, can be seen as a metaphor for the space between colonial powers and the ecological impact of their interactions. It symbolizes the entanglement of British imperialism and its ecological consequences in the Caribbean. By examining, Wide Sargasso Sea, through the lens of ecological imperialism, readers can gain insights into the environmental dimensions of colonialism and the ways in which the exploitation of natural resources is intertwined with issues of power, identity, and resistance. Deforestation and environmental change. The novel depicts the clearing of land for plantation agriculture, particularly the destruction of the lush Jamaican rainforests. This deforestation disrupts the natural ecosystem, leading to soil erosion, loss of habitat for native species, and changes in local climate patterns. The British colonizers' pursuit of economic gains through agriculture contributes to significant environmental changes in the region. Imbalance in resource extraction. The British colonizers extract valuable resources from Jamaica, such as timber, sugarcane, and other agricultural products. The extraction of these resources occurs at a massive scale and without consideration for sustainable practices or the long-term consequences on the environment. This exploitation creates an ecological imbalance and depletes natural resources, impacting both the land and the local communities dependent on them. Introduction of Non-Native Species The novel touches on the introduction of non-native plant and animal species by the British colonizers. 
These introductions often disrupt the delicate ecological balance, as invasive species outcompete native species and alter the dynamics of local ecosystems. The arrival of non-native species can lead to the displacement or extinction of indigenous flora and fauna, further contributing to ecological imperialism. Pollution and degradation. The industrial activities associated with plantation agriculture, such as sugar processing, can result in pollution and degradation of water sources. The release of pollutants into rivers and streams, as well as improper waste disposal, can have detrimental effects on aquatic life and the overall health of the environment. The novel hints at the environmental degradation caused by these activities. Displacement of indigenous communities. The colonization process often involves the displacement of indigenous communities from their ancestral lands. This forced relocation disrupts the intricate relationship between these communities and the natural environment they have coexisted with for generations. The loss of connection to their traditional lands and resources can have profound ecological, social, and cultural consequences. By examining these additional aspects of ecological imperialism in Wide Sargasso Sea, readers can further explore the environmental impact of colonialism and the interconnectedness between ecological exploitation, displacement of communities, and the erosion of traditional knowledge and practices. Climate change and ecological disruption. The novel takes place in the Caribbean during a time when the region's climate is undergoing changes due to global factors. The ecological imperialism lens allows for an examination of how British colonization and the introduction of new agricultural practices contribute to ecological disruption and exacerbate the effects of climate change on the local environment. Land ownership and indigenous rights. The British colonizers assert ownership over vast tracts of land, displacing and marginalizing the indigenous population. This aspect of ecological imperialism highlights the connection between land ownership, resource extraction, and the subjugation of native communities, as well as the resulting impact on the environment. Exploitation of natural resources. The British colonizers view the Caribbean as a resource-rich region and exploit its natural resources for economic gain. This includes the extraction of valuable minerals, deforestation for agriculture, and the plundering of marine resources. The novel explores the consequences of this extractive approach and its ecological implications. Control of water sources. Access to water sources and the control of waterways play a significant role in ecological imperialism. The novel examines how the British colonizers manipulate and control water sources for irrigation, transportation, and industrial purposes. This control allows them to shape and manipulate the landscape to suit their economic interests, often at the expense of the local ecology. Resistance and ecological advocacy. The novel also portrays resistance to ecological imperialism. Characters like Christophine and Antoinette challenge the dominant colonial narrative and advocate for a more harmonious relationship with the natural environment. Their actions and beliefs highlight the importance of indigenous knowledge, sustainable practices, and the preservation of the ecological balance. By exploring these additional aspects of ecological imperialism in Wide Sargasso Sea, readers can delve deeper into the environmental dimensions of colonization and its impact on the Caribbean region. The lens of ecological imperialism provides insights into the complex relationships between power, exploitation, resistance, and the ecological consequences of colonialism. Here are some ways in which ecological imperialism can be observed in Things Fall Apart. Disruption of traditional agricultural practices. The arrival of European colonizers brings with it new agricultural methods and crops that displace and disrupt the traditional farming practices of the Igbo people. The introduction of cash crops like yams and palm oil, which are grown for export, alters the local ecosystem and places strain on the land and resources. Land enclosure and displacement. The British colonizers, driven by economic interests, impose land enclosure policies that dispossess the Igbo people of their ancestral lands. This enclosure disrupts the communal ownership and sustainable land management practices of the Igbo, leading to the displacement of communities and further exacerbating the ecological consequences of colonization. Exploitation of natural resources. The British colonizers exploit the natural resources of Nigeria for their economic gain. This includes the extraction of palm oil, timber, and other valuable resources. The extraction practices are often exploitative and disregard the long-term sustainability of the environment, leading to deforestation, habitat loss, and ecological degradation. 
Imbalance in resource distribution. The influx of European goods and technologies disrupts the local resource distribution and alters the balance between human needs and ecological sustainability. The desire for European products, such as textiles and manufactured goods, creates a demand that puts pressure on the environment and its resources. Loss of traditional ecological knowledge. With the arrival of European influences, the traditional ecological knowledge held by the Igbo people is devalued and marginalized. The deep understanding of the local environment, sustainable agricultural practices, and natural resource management is overshadowed by the imposition of Western perspectives and practices, leading to a loss of ecological wisdom and further degradation of the environment. By examining, things fall apart. Through the lens of ecological imperialism, readers can gain insights into the environmental dimensions of colonization, the disruption of traditional ecological practices, and the exploitation of natural resources. It helps to understand the complex interactions between colonial powers, indigenous cultures, and the resulting ecological consequences. Erosion of cultural ecological practices. The arrival of European colonizers and their imposition of new economic systems disrupts the traditional ecological practices and beliefs of the Igbo people. The colonizers' disregard for indigenous knowledge and sustainable agricultural methods leads to a decline in the use of traditional techniques that were in harmony with the local environment. Introduction of cash crops and monoculture. The British colonizers introduce cash crops like yams and palm oil, which become dominant in the agricultural practices of the Igbo society. This shift toward cash crops and monoculture farming disrupts the ecological diversity and resilience of the land, as it focuses on profit rather than sustainable coexistence with nature. Deforestation and loss of biodiversity. The demand for timber by the colonizers leads to widespread deforestation in the region. The clearing of forests for timber and agricultural expansion destroys habitats, reduces biodiversity, and disrupts the delicate balance of the ecosystem. The loss of diverse plant and animal species has long-lasting ecological consequences. Ecological Consequences of Conflict The novel depicts instances of conflict and violence between the colonizers and the Igbo people. These conflicts often result in the burning of villages, destruction of crops, and loss of livestock. Such acts have direct ecological implications, causing further degradation of the land and disruption of the natural environment. Imbalance in power and resource extraction. The colonizers exercise their power to exploit the natural resources of the region, such as palm oil, for their economic gain. The extraction of these resources often occurs at the expense of the local environment, without proper consideration for sustainability or the long-term impact on the land and its inhabitants. Loss of autonomy and environmental stewardship, the imposition of colonial rule and the undermining of traditional governance systems diminish the Igbo people's autonomy over their land and natural resources. The erosion of their authority and environmental stewardship further contributes to the ecological degradation and loss of control over their own destiny. By exploring these additional aspects of ecological imperialism in Things Fall Apart, readers can further analyze the complex interactions between colonialism, indigenous cultures, and the ecological consequences of colonization. It helps to shed light on the environmental impact of imperialism and the ways in which it disrupts the balance between humans and nature. Disruption of Traditional Hunting and Gathering Practices the arrival of European colonizers and their imposition of new economic systems disrupts the traditional hunting and gathering practices of the Igbo people. These practices were often sustainable and in harmony with the local environment, but the colonizers' influence leads to a shift away from these practices, causing ecological imbalances. Loss of sacred spaces and rituals The colonization process often involves the destruction or appropriation of sacred spaces and rituals that hold ecological significance for indigenous cultures. In, Things Fall Apart, the intrusion of the Christian missionaries disrupts the Igbo people's spiritual connection with the land and their understanding of the natural world, leading to a loss of ecological reverence. Introduction of Western Livestock The British colonizers introduce Western livestock, such as cattle, to the Igbo society. This introduction alters the local ecosystem as these animals graze on land that was previously utilized differently by the indigenous people. The overgrazing and trampling of land by these animals can lead to soil erosion, degradation, and the displacement of native vegetation. Disruption of local fishing practices. The novel depicts the impact of colonialism on the fishing practices of the Igbo people. 
The introduction of new fishing methods, such as nets and traps, by the colonizers alters the traditional fishing techniques used by the indigenous community. This disruption can lead to overfishing, depletion of fish stocks, and ecological imbalances in local water bodies. Loss of self-sustaining agricultural systems, the British colonizers push for cash crops and the monetization of agriculture disrupts the self-sustaining agricultural systems of the Igbo people. The focus on profit and export-oriented agriculture leads to a neglect of food crops and traditional farming practices, making the community more vulnerable to food insecurity and ecological instability. Introduction of industrialization and pollution. With colonization comes industrialization and the establishment of infrastructure that often leads to pollution. In, things fall apart, the arrival of the colonizers brings modern technologies and industries that contribute to pollution and environmental degradation, further impacting the local ecology and the well-being of the community. By considering these additional aspects of ecological imperialism in, things fall apart, readers can gain a more comprehensive understanding of the environmental consequences of colonization. It highlights the ways in which colonialism disrupts traditional ecological practices, alters ecosystems, and undermines the sustainable relationship between humans and the natural world.